listen again. Open up. Now, today we're going to, uh, I'm going to put on pause. You know, I was, I've been talking to you about this, is that we're putting everything pretty much kind of just hit a pause just for a few weeks to hit a certain area that's really, really, really important. And, uh, and it's, again, it's, it's financial peace. We're calling it a quest for hope. In fact, that's the title of what I want to talk to you about today. And I'm only going to share for a couple of weeks um, in here, three weeks really. And, uh, but it begins, I just want you to understand, um, I just want you to understand that two weeks from the day, this all kicks off. And I would really, I just want to tell you, it's, it's real important uh, area in your life. Financial peace, again, as we've been telling you, this is not a give to the church series. Uh, this is an understanding, a biblical concept of, of, of basically managing uh, personal finances. And, uh, and it's, it's something in our culture that is extremely necessary. You know, they tell us from 85 to 88 uh, percent that that really are are. Uh, can you imagine 85 to 88 percent? So that's yeah, that's a huge percentage of our country that basically they live from paycheck to paycheck, right? And it goes on down to feeling real financial stress, uh, overextended, those type things. And so, and so I just we just wanted to to offer something for people to address this in their lives because the scripture teaches us in Galatians that it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. And if you, if you learn to experience freedom in this area, it is an incredible sense of freedom. I had a, it's just so neat. I had a, a single mom, um, uh, all of her kids are gone now, but she told me that she went through this financial piece about eight years ago. And, um, and she, uh, um, and she just wanted to come by and tell me, uh, just to encourage me. I thought that was interesting to, 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 that she's so excited that we're doing this as a church because eight years ago she jumped on, she was a single mom and, uh, and had a couple of kids and, and, and going to getting them through college. And she said, she, she just wanted to tell me, Hey, I just finished, uh, paying off all the student loans, all of everything. And, uh, if I hadn't gone through that eight years ago, I would have been so underwater today. Uh, and so again, it's just one of those incredible pictures. And, it, and again, and this is a single mom, right? And, uh, and so it is one of those things, but you know, it's kind of like, in, uh, in fact, the kits are available today if you want to pick them up. But you know, it's one of those things, it's, it's hard to share up here on this subject because people get real tense when you talk about it. Right? Not, not everybody, and, uh, but they get tense because whenever you're struggling in an area, most of the time, unless you're really bad, you don't want to admit that you're struggling in that area, right? It's kind of like a diet. You know what I mean? It's something we all know we should do, but you know, well, you know, and it's real easy just to put it off because eh, I don't want to. But isn't it interesting? Once we go for several weeks, we're so glad that we did. That's what this is. Jumping in and learning, growing, getting some of these things rolling well, right? And not following what rest of our, of our rest of our culture is doing. And, and I'm, I wanna share with you a little bit of the why. Most of the plan, uh, Dave Ramsey's financial piece is it's a plan to follow, right? It's kinda like a diet, right? right? A lot of diets will work, but you have to stick with it and commit to it. That's why we've decided to put everything else on pause. And let's just focus on this and give everybody the opportunity and offer it every day of the week in case you have to miss so that you can get in the, uh, 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 my bet is, is that you will be so glad that you did. That's why anyone who's ever been through this is more than willing to, to do a video and say, oh man, I, I can't tell you the difference that this has made in my life personally, being free in this area. So that is why we've committed to it. I want you to know that Jesus had a whole lot to say about this area, right? And that's what Matthew chapter six is about. It is, is I just want you to hear, again, we're gonna stay in Matthew chapter six the entire time, not going to any other verses. I just want this particular area that we're talking about, I want you to see what Jesus said about it. 
And it is, it is, it is powerful, but it is extremely simple. And a lot of times we go blowing through this passage and we, and we don't take a look and go, oh, that is what that says. And, and you're going to see that today. And again, this is, this is the thought, having freedom in an area that so many don't experience, right? The, by far the greatest conflict in marriage is financial, is conflict about finances, And so if this clears up in your life, imagine all of the differences it can make across the board. It is an amazing thing. So I want want you to take a look at it. And this is where we're going to begin uh, today in Matthew chapter 6. And these are Jesus' words. And I don't know if it's being in the book of Romans. And we'll come back to that. I'll do three weeks today and two more, right, on this. And then we'll come back and finish Romans. And But since I've been in Romans, I... I have, I have really enjoyed just letting the scriptures speak to you. And then me just being here to kind of explain it along the way. Well, that's what I'm going to do with, with Matthew chapter six. I just want you to, to hear and to understand the words that Jesus is sharing today, because it is freeing when it's followed and understood. All right. So if you, if you, if you want to take some notes, there's just three things, quick things, easy things. And, uh, and uh, you'll be amazed at, at, at you'll look at it and you'll go, wow, that is what that says. Now let's take a look at it. Number one is things you treasure, right? Things you treasure. And that's a great question that you can ask, that you can ask yourself, what are the things that you treasure? Okay, what are the things that you treasure? And I want you to see and understand that the things that you treasure have huge impact in your life, but they're distinguished. They come down from, from basically several areas, right? But let's read this passage, and then I'll come back and explain those to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Jesus makes this statement. Don't lay up for yourselves, right? That is store up. That is invest in, right? All right. Don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth. Now, the word treasure, okay, uh, the, the Bible uses the word treasure in a lot of different places, you know, which eventually, in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about that great parable about the hidden treasure, you know. Um, Jesus talked about that when, man, when a man goes out and he finds a treasure, a hidden treasure in a field, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field, right? And what the word treasure there, really, it means things that you value, are really what it comes down to it. That word treasure means investment, things you invest in. And, um, and so that, in other words, don't, you, you're going to have to invest some, but don't, don't over-invest in things that in the end don't really matter. Jeff, what are you talking about? He explains it clearly. Take a look at this passage. Let it speak to you, all right? Jesus says, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Why? Because everything in this world is decays, right? Law of diminishing returns. It, it starts off new and shiny, and it loses its luster as time goes by. So don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. So what happens is, is that when we spend our time and when we spend our finances on things that are extremely, extremely temporary, right? In fact, sometimes we're, we're spending the most on the things that are the most temporary. What happens is it loses its luster. And before we've even got it paid off, we're throwing it away to get another one that's new and shiny. And it winds up being a trap. Why? Because you're investing in things that aren't very long lasting. This is what Jesus is saying. Hey, listen, don't put all your eggs in the basket, you know, of things that decay, rust, whatever, right? He says, let for yourselves treasures in heaven, all right, where, where moth and rust can't get it and thieves can't break in and steal. Why? Look at verse 21. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Okay, now, 
that may be one of the top 10 most powerful verses in all of the Bible that is just a practical look at the things that are important to you and how things in your life get to be important to you, right? So then, where your investments are, that's where your, go- your heart's going to go. So the things that you treasure, that's where you are going to go. That's why God cares a whole lot about this area, and you'll see, he'll talk about it in just a minute, right? Talks about, about, the, things that you, about the things that you invest in. Now, now, how do you invest in things? How is something determined important? I just think it's so cool that for so many of you, I mean, a lot of you invest in, in our church here and everything, but let's talk about the student camp. I mean, you guys, $34,000, right? And it was given towards, why? Because because in your heart and mind, it's a cool thing to think about. You wanted to invest in a group of teenagers, spiritually. And what you invested in was for long-term, not for short-term. Does that make sense? So the investment is that what do you choose to do? Now, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a choices that you make, but I want you to understand this where your heart goes is where you make investment. There are two major ways that you can make investments. Number one is time. That is what I usually talk about the most. Time is the most important thing that you have, even if you don't realize it or not. Time is, is, is the most valuable commodity you have in your life. But the other thing, you know, and I, so I usually always just talk about what do you do with your time? But since we're on this financial piece, I'm gonna talk about finances today. But second way you invest is your finances. Because so many times we, ha- so many times, <laughs> we have spent our time to gain finances. So th- then therefore there is a, there is a, there's an overlap. But where you spend those resources, right, determines, will determine what you treasure versus the things you don't care about. Now, when, just because you don't care about them, they're, you know, they're not on your radar screen. So I can tell what's important to you. I remember one time I was speaking uh, to a group of college athletes um, and and I wanted them to understand. Can you put the, screen, put the verse back up on the screen? I wanted them to understand this verse, right? Because I wanted them to see how things happen. I can tell you why things are important to you. And I can also tell you, even sometimes people who call themselves believers in Christ and yet they seem to have no desire for the things of the Lord in their life. It's because they're investing in, in all the wrong things. You can order where your heart goes. Jesus tells you how here in just a minute. But this whole thought of where your treasure is, where is your heart going to be? I wanted, I wanted this, this group of athletes to understand this verse. And so, and I was at an FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and so there's about 100 college athletes in the room, and I was just sharing with them, and, uh, and we came to this verse, and I said, here's what I want you to do. And I had them take out a sheet of paper and tear it twice, right? Once long ways and once sideways. And I had four, you know, pieces of paper, and I said, here's what I want you to write, okay? I want, to, I want you to find out the things in your life that you treasure, right? Now, <laughs> it's real easy to spout off the, you, what the things that you treasure, you know, because there's politically correct versions of it, right? There's politically correct versions of, of this. All right, and here they are. Basically, um, you know, well, God's first, I, you know, my family's second, and I'm third. Okay, good. That sounds good, but does it play out in reality? Okay. I want you to see, this is, this, is, this is hard to hear at times, but it is the truth, Jesus' words. <clears throat> so I had them do this. I said, here's how I want you to determine, here's how I want you to determine the thing, things that you treasure. And I gave them several questions. Number one, I said, what do you think about the most? Therefore, when things, when you have dead time or whatever, what, what occupies your thinking time? Number two, what do, you, what do you catch yourself talking about a whole lot? 
The Bible teaches us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So many times the thing that you talk about all the time is what's most important, right, to you, or is what you treasure, right? Uh, number three is what do you spend your time doing? And then number four is your finances. What do you spend your money on? Right? Now, when you put all those things together, those are investments you are making, right? You know, thinking, talking, uh, doing, and, and bucks. And when you put those things, I want you to tell, I'm going to tell you, that is where, that's where your heart's going to go, right? That is where your heart's going to go. Now, I found this incredible, right? As I was thinking about this, you know, it's like, it's like this, all right, here we go. You know, say a lot of you in the room, all right, I'm just using this just basically just, just an illustration, all right? A lot of you in this room probably don't care anything about IBM, right? That's a company if you don't even know what that is, all right? Now, but I can tell you how you can start really caring about them. Number one, invest a whole lot of finances in their stock, all right? Start reading up on them and things that they're doing in their research and development and start checking on how they're doing this and how they're doing that, you will be amazed that you will begin to check every day. Hey, I wonder how they did today. Because you're an, you're an invested. Am I making sense? When you're invested, that's where your heart's going to go. That's what's going to occupy what you think about. That's what's going to occupy then when you talk with friends. Hey, man, what do you think about? What about? What about? What about? What about? Why? Because where your treasures are, investments, that's where your heart's going to go. That's why it's so important, so important to understand this. You can order it. You can order what the things of your heart with. But I'm here to tell you, but if you don't spend time and you don't spend resources on something, then don't expect it to be important to you. Right? When I think about, when I think about my children, I'm, you know, I'm committed to them, right? I really am. I'm committed to my children and, and, and the things that they need. And I have learned that there's a big difference between the things they need and the things they want. I am not so much committed into the things they want, but I'm very committed into the things they need. And so I've learned through this that I care deeply about different things that they do. I don't know about you, but I have four children and three. The third one just graduated college in May. Glory, hallelujah. And I get a raise every time one of them graduates from college, right? I got no raise when they graduated high school, but I've gotten a raise now, right? But I'm invested in their education, right? We've had to do a lot to invest. Why? Because I treasure my children. And the more I invest, the more I treasure them. Isn't that amazing how that works? Right? You cannot say you treasure your children if you don't invest time and resources in them. But that's where your heart's going to go. It's an amazing thing how it works. So anyway, when I was talking to this group of athletes about treasuring, you know, I said, if you're honest, if you're honest, I want you to put the top four things on these four pieces of paper. And I want you to totally only put the things on there that you invest, you know, think time, talk time, doing time, and bucks, all right, money, finances. And then put that on there. And I found it amazing what wound up on those pieces of paper because they were honest. There was a time in my life before I became a believer I want you to understand, I want you to hear this. I want you to understand that the most important thing in my life was a sport, football. Before I became, I mean, but I, that's all I did, right? That's all I wanted to do. And, it, and it, was, it was this crazy commitment to something, listen to me, that began to matter way too much. You want to know how you get there? It's easy to get there. And it can be things that so many people think silly. But here's how it works. All right? I put my life, I, 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 
I just devoted myself to this, to this game, right? Working out, sacrificing, right? I've had three surgeries, right? And I would have kept playing, but after the third surgery, the doctor said I was done. So I was done. But I would have kept playing. I would have kept sacrificing my future to keep playing. Why? Because it was something that I treasured. Listen to me. I understand. That's why this is not a judgmental message today. We've all been there. We all understand it. But I just want you to see it and totally understand it. How is it that we can sometimes make such bad decisions? It's because when something, you begin to treasure something a little too much, you'll sacrifice anything to keep it. Right? I look back on that and I'm like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still, have, I still have a love for the game, but it's in a perspective now that it was not before. But I look back at it almost being ridiculous that to treasure something so greatly that you would, you would basically cut out other things in your life that should have the bigger priority. Does that make sense to you? That's why you hear people put down, you know, you know, you know, football is life or fishing is life or, you know, because they begin to treasure something too much. And then you look and you think, so that is the greatest thing you treasure in your life? But see, the problem I didn't realize when I was in sports, when you invest so heavily in something that is so temporary, you're cruising for a bruising. You're just waiting to be beat up. Right? Why? Because if it's that fragile, like, like football is, if it's that fragile, it, it can be gone quickly. And all of a sudden, you have to go to the next thing. And that's what our world does. They go to the next thing. And they start investing again in something. And then before long, because what Jesus says here, moth and rust, right? It begins to go down. So we throw that away and we go to the next thing. It can be expensive going from thing to thing. This is what he's talking about in this passage. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. You have ordered, wherever your heart is today, you've ordered it by the investments you've made, both time and finances, right? So this becomes this thought, right? So number one, things you treasure. Number two is things you seek. How do you get there, right? Well, it has to do with your eyes. At least that's what Jesus says here. Look at this. Matthew chapter six, verse 22. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes are healthy, okay, then the whole body is going to be, is going to follow along. So think about this. What you see turns into eventually what you seek what you seek turns into a desire, which does, what you desire turns into investments, whether time or finances, and what you invest in becomes your treasure, and what you treasure eventually is where your heart's going to go. And it starts out that simple. That is, if somebody can guard what goes into their brain, through their eyes, they can about order their own life. It's an amazing thing. How can we get so addicted to different things? And I'm not talking about dest only destructive things, but destruction of things too. You think about a drug or an alcohol, basically what you do, you're buying a feeling. You buy a feeling, it makes you feel good for a while, but boy, is it temporary. It's expensive and it's temporary. In fact, the more you depend on it, all right, the more temporary it becomes. It's an incredible thing when you, begin to, when you begin to look at what Jesus is talking about here. Therefore, I see turns into what I seek, right? And he goes on to say, if, 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 you, if, if you're healthy, if your eyes are healthy, not physically healthy, hear what Jesus is saying here. So this is the rest of you, the body, everything else is gonna follow along, right? But if your eyes are bad, Right? Whole body's gonna be full of darkness. Now, sometimes people equate darkness with evil, and sometimes the Bible does. But I think the picture here is not talking about evil, it's talking about in the dark. 
right? You go running after stuff, you lose the ability to have sound judgment. It's like, it's trying, try, it's like trying to guess what's in the room when it's dark. You can't see. And it becomes easy to be deceived in the dark. It, is, it becomes easy to be scared in the dark. It becomes easy to hallucinate in the dark, right? That's where some of this fear comes from that so many people live with. I tell you, this is such a powerful passage, right? But then if you're light, okay, if then the light in you is darkness, all right, how, how great is your darkness, all right? And then in case you're not understanding the subject of what Jesus is talking about, he tells you, you can't serve two masters. Either you're gonna love one, all right, either you're gonna hate one and love the other, or you're gonna be devoted to one and despise the other. And then he tells you exactly what he's talking about. You can't serve God and, and, and money. You just can't do it, right? Because whichever one you trust in, invest in, it's the one that's going to rule. Guys, this is the verse, when you hear me make the statement, Money makes a great servant, but it is a cruel taskmaster. This is where I get it from. Jesus says it himself. If you get all wrapped up in these areas of your life, it's an amazing, it's, it's begin to what you treasure, at least what money represents. It represents things I can do, things I want, all right? Power to order this or that, and it really just is an illusion. He explains that the rest of the way, right? So things you treasure, things you seek, now things God promises. Let's finish this up. And, uh, but I want you to follow along with Jesus's line of reasoning in this area. And as a believer, he's called you to live in freedom in this area. And he has set you free in this area. But it's a, it's a direction to learn to live free in this area. It is a powerful thing. The difference between freedom and slavery in this particular area. That's why as we are, we're focusing so much on it. But let's, get, let's get to it. Things God promises, right? Therefore, I tell you. Well, therefore. Therefore is something that he's just said now he wants to tell you this. What has he just said? The things that you, where you, you know, the things that you treasure, that's where your heart's going to go. You can't serve God money. Because those things are true, he's telling you this. Therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life. Therefore, worry, anxiety, right? And I find that, I find that amazing when he, he brings this thought in here too. Because most people live with incredible worry, anxiety. Sometimes it even, even goes into anger about the things that they want to do versus what they can do and what they can achieve and what they can have. And they, and they have this constant worry that goes on in their lives. In fact, sometimes the more that you have, if you're not his, right? And if you're not free in this area, in fact, the more is, is that the more stress can come in, anxiety, worry, stress, they all go hand in hand, right? And the thought here is, is that you are worried about something, okay, that doesn't even, that shouldn't, that shouldn't, you shouldn't even be worried about because there's not anything you can do about it. This is what he's saying. Therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink or your body about the clothes you're going to wear. You have to remember at Jesus' time, it's different than our time. There is an abundance of food and clothing now, especially in our country. But at Jesus' time, people worried about, you know, what am I gonna do? You know, how am I gonna provide? How am I gonna do this? You know, and I'm not saying that doesn't happen today, but it's not near like it was then. And Jesus goes on to say, is life not more important than food and body is more important than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, okay? They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Now, I want you to understand, okay, this is a powerful statement. In fact, there's a small rabbit trail here, okay? 
um, I want you to understand you are different than the, than the animals around you, despite what people are trying to tell you today. All right? You were created differently than the rest of the creation. Scripture says is that you were created in God's image. And you have a soul. You have abilities to choose and to order. All right? The animals don't sin. They don't know any better. All right? They don't have that soul. You do. So the point here is he's, he's trying to tell you you're much more valuable than they because of how you were created and who you are. Despite what our world tries to tell you around. All right? That's a rabbit trail. Let's get back to where we were. In other words, God takes care of that particular picture. You just think he's going to with you. All right? Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life? All right? Most people, and I can understand, most people live in absolute terror, anxiety of a lifespan. What's going to happen? You know, I just know what's going to happen. You know, I'm going to finally get to where I want to get, and then I'm going to die before I get there. You know, we laugh, but it goes through our minds. Those things go through our minds. In this constant anxiety, which in reality, you're not near as in control as you think you are, right? It's in his hands. You know, money gives you the illusion that you, you, you're in control, but it is an illusion, right? The only way to be free of money's control, right, is to not put your faith and trust in it. And that's much easier said than done, especially when you live in the culture you and I live in, where, listen to me, trillions of dollars are spent every year in advertising to convince you that you need this in order to be satisfied or complete or be in the end, right? Trillions of dollars are bombarded at you every year to get you to buy stuff or to get stuff, right? I, I love the old saying. I think my former pastor used to say it. We buy things that we don't need with money that we don't have to impress people we don't even like. <laughs> right? That's a pretty good statement, isn't it? And it's, 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 it's the wrong, and, and in reality, you don't control it. So therefore, where does that trust come from? And who do we trust? What do we trust? Because you're all going to trust something. And what Jesus is saying here, the trust in money, well, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just lead to some real cruel, cruel taskmaster, right? That's what he's saying to you, right? Why are you going to be anxious about clothing? clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They grow and they don't toil or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his great wealth, right? was not dressed like one of these. If God can clothe the, clothe the grass of the field today, right, which is alive today and is tomorrow it's thrown in the oven, how much more is he going to clothe you? So God's promises, if you're his, to trust him. You're either going to trust him or you're going to trust finances. One leads to some real contentment and peace. The other leads to stress. And anxiety, right? Amazing. This is what he's saying. And if you look down at this passage, you're going, wow, that is what he's saying. I've heard that all, all morning and last night. Wow, that, that is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a little faith, right? Therefore, don't be anxious about saying, you know, what, you know, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? This is for the Gentiles. I like the way the old King James translates the words Gentiles there. He translates it pagans. Basically, the people of this world. That's what they seek after. It's this constant seeking after either stuff, things, or status, right? Popularity, whatever, whatever. Or, or security. And... Money, if you will, promises you can have these things, but it, it rarely delivers, right? Pagans seek after these things. Look at this, but your heavenly father knows that you 
need them, right? He knows that you need them all. I question, right? Keep that verse up there. Your heavenly father, if you're his today, okay? If you are his, then he is your father. I am a father. I tell you, a lot of the scripture woke up to me when I became a father. I can promise you this. I have mine, my four children, right? I would do most anything for them if they need it. I have, I have learned there's a huge difference between need and want, as I told you before, right? If my kids need it, I'll do anything to provide it for them. And I'm a sinful dad. How much more if you're his? Now, if you're not his, I understand why you struggle, right? But if you're his, then what he's telling you is, why are you going around wringing your hands? And, oh no, what if, 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 you know, another hurricane comes? You know, what if we have another downturn in the economy? What if, 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 what if I can't do this, 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 and this? And all of a sudden, it, you know what I'm talking about. If you're his, learn what it means to be his. And then what'll come to you is incredible. Well, Jeff, how do you do that? Well, here, now you understand the context of chapter six, verse 33, a very quoted verse, and yet usually quoted out of context, all right? But we now know the context of what he's talking about and listen to what he says. Seek first the kingdom of God. Listen to me. There are gonna be many other things in this life you're going to seek. Some things are temporary, like food and clothes, right? There's going to be things that you have to invest in, you have to, you have to spend toward. The, the problem comes when they become the priority over, over this. So what he says is, is seek God first. And then something's going to happen that you didn't expect. What does it mean? You hear these phrases. It used to drive me nuts. I used to, I used, before I became a believer, I used to think, oh, that's just a pipe dream or that's just some sort of psychological manipulation. But what does it mean to have peace in the middle of the storm? This life is a storm, right? How do you have peace or contentment, whatever it is? I promise you, you will never find contentment in this world, not in the temporary things, because they don't have what it takes to fill those needs. That's why being a follower of money is such a bust, because no matter how much you get, it never is enough. No matter what you have, it's never enough. And it just, you, it just leaves this big gaping hole in your life, right? But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he'll, he'll make sure you have everything else you need, right? All these things will be added to you. Next week, just to give you a commercial for next week, right? Next week. Next week's title is The Gift of Contentment. It's what you're looking for. Right? That's what you seek. You seek some peace. Right? Content. The problem is, when you go running after things that are temporary, you use them up and then you throw them away before you go to the next thing. And it only gets worse. Guys, I've been doing now what I do for a long time. I've learned from a whole lot of people. And a long, long time ago, um, not here, uh, I was, and I, sh I shared this a few weeks ago when I was talking about this financial piece. And I was counseling this couple, and um, God bless them, conflict was, was central to their relationship. They fought, but 90% of their arguments was over finances. And it, and it got into this almost silly. I mean, they were both very intelligent and they were both, but they allowed, and they were both, I guess, fairly mature, but their arguments sounded like, like two kids arguing. And well, you bought this, so I was able, I could, you know, I should be able to, and then it just went on and on and on and on. Now, here's the kicker. I want you to hear it, okay? Between them, they made about a half a million dollars a year, okay, between them. And yet they lived on the edge of, I won't say bankruptcy, because they weren't that far. 
but they lived on the stressful edge. Listen to me, look at me. It's not about how much you make. It will never, because if you struggle now, if you get a $25,000 raise next year, I give you a year before you're right back in the same spot. It's not about how much. It's about learning where does contentment come from? Because if you keep dumping stuff into that area of your life, the hole just gets bigger, right? And the stress just gets to be more, right? It is a powerful, that's, that'll be next week. That's what Paul said, I have learned to be content. How do you do that? Scripture teaches, we'll talk about it next week. But here's, the, here's where I wanna close. Guys, that's what I want you to see because I'm here to tell you this, is that when you learn this kind of freedom, these are all areas of finding freedom in Christ. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. And this is one of the areas that Jesus names by name. You can't serve God and money. You can't do them both, right? You can't serve both. You, it'll never work. It never has worked and it never will work. So then what does that look like? How does that happen? Obviously, that's why Jesus said what he said. So as I close today, I would encourage you, right? Very much so to encourage you to, 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 get it, to get a plan, number one, right? To get a plan. And uh, if you're not part of one of these classes, there's, there, there, there happens all the time. Jump in, jump in. You'll see some incredible things in learning to have a plan. Is there anything overly unique about his plan? Not necessarily. I mean, a lot of guys have a lot of, a lot of people have a lot of good plans, right? And when I'm talking about Dave Ramsey, He's a great guy, and what, some of the things he has in there is fantastic. But I have found it's, huh, it's just learning. It's like, it's like a diet, right? Lots of diets work, but none of them work, right? If you don't commit to it. It's like the friend of mine I had, he said, he's talking about his diet. He said, he said, yeah, he said, that slim fast stuff, he says, that stuff is awesome. He says, I didn't lose any weight, but it goes great with nachos. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, lots of plan will work. But until you get to the point to where, okay, I'm not going to trust this anymore. I'm going to make a different, I'm going to make a change, right? You'll be amazed at what happens, all right? God bless you as you do it. God bless you as you do it. All right, let's all stand and we'll have a closer round of prayer.